Hello, welcome coaches. Uh, Mark Hart here with System Basketball, and I got my co-host uh, KG, Kurt Gelsdorf here. Hope everybody is doing well today. Um, we're going to get started here very shortly. Uh, if you're joining us um, on Facebook uh, and you want your questions to be shown with your name, you need to grant StreamYard permission. If you're inside the Dribble Drive Motion Hoop Talk group, uh, there's a link in there. Uh, click on that. Otherwise, it's just going to put your name as Facebook user. So if you want your name to be known, um, Facebook has that privacy issue. Uh, if you're on YouTube with us tonight, not a problem. If you can let us guys know in the chat where you're joining us from. Also, if you are running the Dribble Drive now or if you're totally new to it, We'd love to hear that as well. Uh, um, we got a little presentation for you tonight. Uh, day one of the challenge is we're going to go over the mentality of the dribble drive, kind of the philosophy of it, our thoughts, opinions of it, and give you guys a base foundation so that when you leave tonight, you have a good understanding of what the dribble drive is. Um, Kurt, um, we're going to get start, uh, started here. I, I lost your screen, so I need you to hit share on the PowerPoint. Gotcha. And then just leave it as, and then we're, I should be able to add it to the stream here. Perfect. I don't see it yet. All right. All right. So we are good to go here. All right. Got some. Some people, first-year head coaches running it. We have Jason Burning here. Uh, got a few coaches chiming in. Got a uh, coach from Canberra, Australia, coach. So we got somebody joining us from Australia tonight. Is he locked That's down? Awesome. He's locked in his house. <laughs> <laughs> and it isn't. And it isn't Adrian. So uh, we got somebody new joining us. Unless that's Adrian's. Uh, uh, YouTube handle, but I don't think it is. So <laughs> anyways, uh, guys, today uh, we're going to, like I said, we're going to get started here. Uh, Kurt, Kurt and I put together a PowerPoint, and then I have some Luceo animated drawings to help you guys understand the concepts of Dribble Drive tonight. So um, I'm planning on probably going for about 45 minutes here and then have a little bit of a Q&A session for you guys that you could pop in some questions and we'll answer them for you guys. So, uh, Kurt, want to go whenever you're ready to start it off for us. Sure. We'll get going. I know you guys are looking for some info. Um, as we go through, just a quick little bio. And, again, I think Mark would say the same thing. Um, reach out anytime. Uh, this is just a little bit about what I'm doing now. I'm at the JC level up here in Oregon. I was a longtime high school guy. So I, I, I feel you if you're, if you're there thinking about dribble drive. And yeah, do you think you have the right personnel and then the size or bigs or little? So I, I have a, a long-term background uh, at the high school level. We were able to win some games at Oregon City when I was there. Uh, and I've, I've been kind of all in on dribble drive since 2013. And just a little side story, I, was, I met Vance Wahlberg in 2005 and we started adopting concepts. He was recruiting uh, when he was at Pepperdine, one of our players, one of the boys' players at our high school. So that's how it kind of got me on that dribble drive journey. And I'm really all in. I mean, I don't think there's no plan B as Paul Westhead says about the system. There's no plan B for me. There's tweaks, there's wrinkles and, and feel free to reach out. I've got an email there. There's a Twitter follow and I've got some YouTube clips that we put up on our Clackmas community website or YouTube page uh, that, that I really think you can dive into and see um, some concepts also. And um uh, get marks up there mark you want to talk about your journey uh yeah guys um i've been coaching high school basketball for the last 25 years uh became a varsity basketball coach in 2001 started off as a lower level freshman coach for a year coached jv basketball for four years so did the lower level coach thing for five years uh coached at Bowen park high school in california for six years, thought, thought I was going to move to Canada when I got married, took a year off, 
became an assistant coach for the guy that took over for me. Then he took off to Colorado. So I retook over the program and we got it rolling there. And that's when the, the dribble drive uh, journey started um, for me. And 2008, I've been running concepts of it for the last, what is that now, 12, 13 years, um, either four out or five out, um, hybriding it and running it with when I didn't have any players to play in the dunker spot. So and then I started um, system basketball to do courses, clinics, and stuff to help out coaches. So been doing that since March of 2020. Um, this year, uh, some people know, some people don't know. Um, I will be um, switching to the girls' side this year, and I'll be an assistant coach here in California um, locally, um, helping out a, a local girls' program. So I uh, made the switch to that. Um, and looking forward to um, doing the defensive side of the ball, if you can believe that, Kurt. Um, so um, usually I talk almost all offense. So um, I'm gonna be doing the I'm gonna be the defensive guy. So there you go. Um, um, so, anyways, that's enough about me. Let Let's get into it. Me and Kurt. I know Kurt probably has it on the next slide. The oh no, it's the next one after this. The no fluff, no content. There you go. Yeah, all just, content. Just uh, it, just to always give credit. Um, I always will put Vance up there no matter what. And, I, and when I do clinics and talk dribble drive, I'll say the same thing. Um, I, I think the great thing about Vance was he, he, he did something completely unique at the time. And I think a lot of people now have kind of taken it and run with it in so many different directions. We're going to try to give you the basic philosophy tonight and the basic mentality and some, some, some actions and start getting it in your mindset, you know, is dribble drive for you or maybe take your dribble drive and, and kind of pique your interest in some other things uh, about it that maybe you're, you're, you're getting aware of. And again, our goals for the three day challenge, uh, we're, I've always said this and I think Mark adopted it quite a bit a while ago. We started doing projects together is content, not fluff. Uh, we want to give you stuff that you can look at, make some decisions about ultimately you as the coach have to make those decisions for your team, for your program, for your players. Uh, if you've got any big questions, We'll have some Q&A time, but I think Mark will tell you that it's set up also for some comments that you can put in there, and he'll be able to monitor those also. And if there's something that we want to stop it for, we'll try to address those too. It'll kind of be a, a one or the other kind of thing. Uh, again, same thing with the clarifying questions during the session, big ones at the end. If there's anything later that comes up, guys, uh, open book here. I, I always tell coaches I was very blessed to have some great coaches help me when I didn't know anything um, at the Mount of, of, of uh, King Stupid or the, that, that old expression that you just don't know what you don't know. I, I know some. I'm by no means the smartest guy in the room, and that's why I enjoy doing these things. I like sharing and hearing other people's ideas as they watch. There's a couple emails for you. Uh, that you could follow up with. And then, uh, you know, this might be where, Hey, I, I've never run dribble drive. Is this, is this something I want to try? Um, or maybe there's some concepts that fit and over the three days, maybe you'll see a few things that you really like. And again, always share and grow. I think the old days of, of locking up the film and not letting anybody see it. And by the time I was done coaching at the end that we would have opponents coaches in our gym watching practice in the summer. Now it was a little more awkward during the, during the regular season. We never did that, but if somebody wanted to come watch our practice, we, we had no problem. You, you got to beat them on the floor and, and execute them. And if they know one special magic play, then, then <laughs> I'm probably not teaching the game very well. So we're going to dive in day one. This is kind of the philosophy the mentality with some, some X's and O's toward the end. Um, you know, when you're thinking about dribble drive motion, uh, I've got a friend of mine, Doc Shepler, who's done stuff on here. He just calls it simply drive motion uh, as far as the, the concepts that he utilizes from it. And, you know, the, the whole idea is, you know, you can do your, your dribble drive in an essentially positionless uh, situation Um you know, that's kind of the, the way the game is being played at the highest levels. Uh, you know, we don't tell you you're going to be a post, you're going to be a guard. Uh, it allows your guard heavy team to create advantages and essentially becomes four or later on, if you go to it, a five out 
positionless offense. And it's just basically some organized penetration. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Another thing is, is if you're big on analytics, um, the dribble drive offense is basically based on analytics. The, the idea of a lay-in and talking about points per possession, getting fouled and getting to the free throw line and the points per possession there. And then lastly, the three point shot, you know, trying to shoot it above 33% and the analytics that go into that 1.0 points per possession. You know, when Vance first did this in 2005, it was revolutionary. Now I think all of us know a little bit about analytics. Some of us are maybe all the way in. Um, it is a freedom uh, of, of play offense. Uh, the guards are allowed. The posts are allowed, If you, depending on how you do it. Uh, there's a lot of freedom to make plays. There are some organized rules, though. There's some general rules to follow, and I think that's what makes it great to me is, is it's not just – trying to make a read that, that I'll tell you, I, I use that word carefully when I say read because, um, because a lot of times your high school players can't make the correct read. And even Bobby Knight, if you listen to him talk, talked about, he, he would give direction specifically about some of his offensive things that the players couldn't always make the right read. So there's, there's some rules to follow that makes it free. And I know that's kind of contradictory, but, but the rules allow freedom. Um, and then the penetration rules, again, I, I think if just a, a shallow dive in a dribble drive is worth your time, even if you're running different types of offenses, because it does teach you, you know, that, that concept that everybody says that they want their team to do is that, you know, I, I teach my team how to play rather than run plays. And I think dribble drive teaches you how to play. As far as why not. Hey, Kurt, Kurt, yeah, can, so, I, can I elaborate a little bit? Oh um, yeah, go right ahead. I'm sorry, Mark. Can you go back to the last, the, the teachers penetration rules? Um, did one of these lives the other night with another with coach wheeler and my honest opinion is no matter what you're running guys um, i grew up as a flex flex player flex coach and those type of offenses beat you up because teams will switch and they'll force you to make plays they'll make you dribble the ball so the rules of this as kurt was elaborating on is it just allows you to have bailouts. It, you know where your teammates are going to be. So there's there's lane penetration, there's baseline penetration, there's middle penetration rules. So I'll ask you, no matter what you're running, Princeton, chin, uh, shuffle, triangle, do your players know what to do once they put it on the floor? And that's why I don't really know if this is an offense. Offense per se, it is, but it. I call it like a breakdown offense. You can run a ball screen continuity. You can run the European ball screen. And once the ball is put in on the floor, your players should know what to do because they've learned these concepts. So if, if that's something that you take from this over the three days, I think it's a great thing for you to understand is to put in penetration rules in whatever offense you're running. And that's that was my why. Yeah. And I, I think it's it's kind of this perfect blend of structure and freedom. You know, Mark always used that term organized penetration, and I really like that. But it's this it's this blend. It's taking just the right amount of structure and the right amount of freedom and allowing kids to play essentially with with a free mind and a free head. Um, are we okay, Mark? Good to go? Because again, yeah, I'm on that yeah. screen. I can't yeah, see. I know. So, You're yeah. good, bud. All right. Uh, as far as the why not DM, DDM, um, we'll myth bust them. If you want to stick with us, if you want to stick with us long enough, if you have the, the fortitude to make it through the three days and maybe talk a little bit deeper with us, um, I think there's there's a myth bust to any of these things. And again, this is just a sampling. There, there's probably 50 things that a guy might say, or we could get into a room with 50 different coaches and they'll tell you why they don't want to run it or whatever. And that's okay. That's the beautiful part about basketball. You know, some of the things you hear is, you know, I got two bigs. Uh, I, I, I want to play some high low and, you know, I can't really attack maybe with, with the personnel that we have. Um, and that's always something you kind of hear. Um, Lack of movement, you know, you tend to have a tendency with, with some of the rules um, that you can play around with, and that's why it'll get myth busted. Um, you know, sometimes you'll you'll hear that comment about dribble drive. It's one guy attacking and four guys standing, 
you'll hear that one uh, that got, kind of leads into number three, the ball watching, you know, an ISO ball. And I think that kind of goes back to what Calipari did with it early with Derrick Rose. And I think there's probably not a coach in the room that wouldn't do what he did as far as letting Derrick Rose play. I think when I watched that old Memphis film, I think he didn't give him enough room. I think he had too many times where it was uh, guys in the corner kind of helping off. I can remember doing a film session with Mark one night. We kind of chuckled about that. Uh, you know, you don't have a, a lot of screening. You know, the early dribble drive, the Vance Wahlberg pure dribble drive had no screening, none at all. And again, we'll myth bust a little bit. If you, if you have certain actions you like in your offense, I think you can continue to use those. And, and learn a little bit more about DDM and maybe you'll you'll come to our side on that thing. And again, just kidding coaches, there's so many great ways to do it. But we're just trying to instruct you in the, in the, in the ways of the dribble drive. Shot selection uh, can be hard, especially young coaches. Um, telling the principal's kid, and I'm, I'm joking, sort of, um, you know, you can't shoot that shot or that's not a great shot. I think teaching shot selection, I think one of the most important things you can do as a coach, if you only take away one thing from this slide right here, it's you have to teach shot selection. You have to teach your players what a good shot is. Lots of ways to do it. You can use, you know, some some small sided games as the as the new term is. You can use some rules, but I think you have to teach shot selection uh, in order to be successful uh, in dribble drive. And I don't know if you wanted to elaborate a little bit on that, Mark, about that shot selection. I know we talked about it a little bit earlier. All right, move it on. You know, Vance Wahlberg, when he created this offense, um, he had the big three. And and I wouldn't wouldn't be, you know, a, a good dribble drive guy unless you talked about the big three. And the big three are the first one. You have to have an attack mentality. And I think that's one of the beauties of, of, of being a dribble drive team is you get an aggressive group of guys, that gals that want to get to the rim. You, you have to be able aggressive to the rim at minimum a paint touch. And I was at coaching you live uh, about a month ago and, and got into a conversation with Nick nurse. And, you know, he asked the group, what's the most important thing for an NBA offense. And my hand went up right away and I said, paint touches. And he was like, bingo. That's all they talk about. They chart them. They, they analyze them, what kind of paint touches they are. Um, so again, Dribble drive uh, emphasizes that. Uh, the spacing, you know, Wahlberg always talked about having great spacing. Uh, the four out, you, know, you can tweak, play around with, with different alignments, but but basically you've got to give your players room to play. And how, you know, when the ball moves, what do they do when the ball gets attacked uh, into the paint? What do they do? Gaps is the third part of the big three, you know, create driving gaps. And you know, we're going to use the term single gap. We're going to use the term double gap. We might even use the term triple gap. And now all that really does coaches, it talks about the distance between players, you know, a player that's in the slot and the other player in the slot, that would be a single gap. If you can space your players properly, you're, you're trying to get to double gaps. So yeah, just keep that in mind as some of the vocabulary as we go through this. Um, again, there's, there's a coaching tip that just popped up. Um, there's kind of a general rule that you pass through a single gap and drive through double and triple gaps. And this is something that, that if you're a dribble drive guy, you've, you've probably seen before, or even some, some of the, the newer drive motion stuff that you've seen around. I've heard this one used and it's something that, that I've, I've been familiar with, with quite a while. Cause you can't drive through those singles. You get a special player maybe once in a while. But double and triple gaps, you know, the old saying that Wahlberg used was that, that an average kid can get through a triple gap. So, again, just keep that in mind as we move through. Just for purposes of this presentation, to keep it basic, we're just going to use a one through five numbering system uh, for our players. Uh, point guard is your one. If anybody's got a left-handed point guard, won a state championship back in 2014 with a lefty PG, and boy, oh, boy, that is – ideal um just attacking that middle um if they're not a point guard type player put them at the two but a left-handed point guard is is beautiful but doesn't mean you have to i mean we've I, we haven't had one since then but but if you have that luxury it's a cheat code uh your two guard is typically your best shooter in the Wahlberg system and the dribble drive system and again you can play around with this this is just some guidelines for you to look at uh the three uh, a shooter 
is a bonus. It's nice when they can stick it. Um, but, but typically because so much offense is run on the right side of the floor as you're getting pushed down the floor, um, that if you can get an offensive rebounder that can crash from that weak side, that's ideal. Uh, the four man, um, call it a post, very flexible in the modern dribble drive. There's so many things you can do. Once you get the understanding of the offense, if you've got a terrific four, there's so many actions, the Princeton's, some five outs, some horns, so many cool things that you can do. Again, we're trying to keep you to the basics. So for the purpose of this one, uh, we'll keep it pretty simple. And then the five man, you know, I've used the term H back for that one. I've had some friends of mine use the term trigger man. But for, again, for the today, we're going to call it just the five. And that's the person that takes the ball out of bounds is your trailer. And Wahlberg always wanted it to be two point guards. Um, what I've found is a really strong driver, ideal, a strong right-handed driver paired with a strong left-handed driver is very, very challenging to deal with. Okay. So again, there's your number system. So as we go through today, you can see, you know, and start making a mental note of uh, where this fits with your team and so forth. Okay. The basic spacing, and we're not going to dive into in, in the three-day challenge. We're not going to get super advanced. That's kind of for some other time, but we are going to try to give you some basics here and the mentality here on day one. And your basic alignment, Mark and I, you know, we, we, we talk about little wrinkles each time we talk and what, what he's doing different. And again, this could be personnel based, but your two and three are in the corners. Um, you know, they've run, they've run, you know, free throw line extended. And then, then once they realize they're not going to get it, they're, they're going to extend down to those rim lines. Uh, the one, you know, we always want to talk about conquer and middle. And, and, and obviously the reality of it is the one may get pushed out a little bit wider. Uh, the five is, is high and wide. And, and again, there's, there's different ways the teams can guard you, but we're going to keep it basic here. And the four men, we call that the dunk spot, and, and you can adjust that based on the talent of that player. It can be, hey, this kid's a dunk spot. We want to get him as far away as we can. If you watch the NBA, that's what they like to do. They put that player way away because they're so athletic they can come back. Uh, I know guys that have had dominant posts, put them a little bit higher so they can run a lot of duck-ins on the weak side. So that's kind of, again, a flexible thing. But the basic alignment of dribble drive is right there. When we attack the rack, now we're getting into a terminology thing there. The rack, that's the land. That's the finish at the rim. Uh, some things that go along with attacking the rack and the mentality. Organized penetration. Okay, that, that I, I beat my guy. And you hear a lot of guys now talk big advantage, small advantage, those kind of things. But we're just talking about I got by my guy. What happens? The organized penetration. Um, and there's three types. And so Mark's getting ready to jump in and show you these things on his, uh, his software. So Mark, just keep me, keep me up to date because I can't see you. I'm just going through this. No problem. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, uh, no, okay. you can finish this. You can okay. finish the. You can keep going. Perfect. Okay. Get your lane penetration. You've got middle penetration and lane kind of from the slots you know, attacking from there, you've got your, your middle penetration, typically from the wingish area. But again, a lot of things, you know, there's different angles to this. We all know basketball's got all sorts of different nuances to it. And then your baseline drive and where you have to move. Uh, the okay, attack, Kurt, set, Kurt, yeah, go ahead, coach. I'm going to go. You, so now you can just click on StreamYard. So that we're good. Yeah. So now all you right. can see it, right? You see yep. us? You see I me? got all it. Right. Okay, guys. So lane penetration for you um, is just straight down the line, lane. So there are penetration rules. So when the one drives, depending on what, what your belief is, some people say three-point line, some people say free-throw line. So we'll just say between the three-point line and the free-throw line, the other players move. So it is based upon the ball handler driving and the other players reacting to the drive. So when one gets to the rack or lay in, he needs to have always a player, and I harp on this, strong side corners filled, weak side block areas filled. We've kind of switched it, haven't we, Kurt? Now we just kind of almost refer to this as the 45. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it, it, depending on how it happens, but, but we'd like to have somebody in that 45 spot. 
I've referred to it over the years as a window area because it's not a set in stone. It could probably be anywhere from in this area. They need to find the open, the open space based upon how their man's defending. And then I've called this for the last, I forget how many years, I've called this a six. So we're gonna we're gonna get behind the penetrator's back, a six, a military term. So he's like covering his back. So, and most people refer to this as a drag, a Euro cut, um, what other, I mean, and that's where we might not get into all that today, but terminology is key to this offense. Find something you like, uh, whether it's Vance's stuff, stuff you've heard from me and Kurt, uh, Greg Campy's stuff with one syllables. Those are the top, like people that people look at. Um, I know everybody make it your own, but stick to it. So let's go back. So I'm going to take, so if it went, so if they were the other way, so it's a right-hand lane drive and a left-hand lane drive. I can't flip the numbers, guys, but I can flip the side of the court. Sorry. So now if you went here, it'd just be the opposite. It's mirrored. So everything's done on one side. So if we took out the, the lines, you're going to start seeing he's driving the five move before the three in this situation, and he's starting to fill him. And now the three is starting to move up. And that's lane penetration for you guys. So Mark, the next you, one is – go ahead. Could you, I just want to hit on, the, on the, the strong side corner and the mentality there, the strong side corner as far as moving, not moving. I think somebody might have a question there about that strong side corner. Let's see. Do we have one? I don't see any questions. I don't see any. Do you want to keep them in that that deep corner? Or do you want to lift them at all? Oh, on the pickup, coach. I would leave him as he's driving, but if he picks it up, now it's a, it's a gray area. If this player starts to help early, then they're gonna or or a little bit late, they're gonna have to create an angle for help. But for the most part, you want to stay patient there. That's how I teach it, Kurt. Do you teach it any different? Yeah, and, and I think what you said there at the end is really important. Patience in the corners. You'll you'll figure out as a coach what you like best. And I think Mark had it right. If, if your man's, and again, we could talk about how they're guarding the corner, but but I think the most important thing is is patience in the corners. You, you do not want to be too early. If the two-man lifts up, and Mark, I know you could probably draw this from the beginning, X2 is going to be in the way. Of, of 01 and that's what you do not want so patience in the corners is huge it's a really good point so what you're saying is you want so if so you're saying x2 is already up up the line kurt yeah i'm just saying well, if, if, if two comes too early if two you know and i think we all know what you're saying mark is is that is like you can draw an arrow from from your two man in the corner there they get excited they want to lift they want to come too early they they don't want to the hold in the corner and they move and it just creates no room. Okay. So question here, we got to do here. So this is from Tracy. How are you doing coach? Um, asking about this five fill. Yes. So anytime we break, I usually say three point line. So unfortunately I play in high school, but this court's an NBA court that's on this diagram guys. So kind of when he breaks the high school three point line for us, Five's going to five's gonna read left-hand drive, and he's going to start coming over. So that's that's your read right there, Tracy. So, um, And now we have a, another real quick question here from Jason Burning. What do you do with the two if he's your best three-point shooter but not necessarily a strong driver? Um, you can make him a – backdoor player or a catch and shoot player you could tell them if they don't shoot it they can that's the down up over concept that's probably a little bit above tonight right kurt but um if they catch that ball in the dead corner they need to be shooting it or driving it immediately or passing it they can't catch and hold because that'll just ruin ruin the spacing any other ideas on on what you would do with that coach yeah, I mean, the, the nice part about if he's a good shooter, 
is defensively they'll probably be pretty tight and that that might open up a little bit bigger driving gap for your guys up top so i would i would make sure i was pairing that guy you know again that's the beauty of dribble drive eventually you're going to get a a drive into his gap and they're going to have to make a decision um but yeah you know catch and shoot it you know maybe maybe he you know he needs a note from his dad just to dribble the ball once um maybe you just you're going to move it you know, I like the idea of backdooring him. If they're, they're guarding him tight, get him out of there and go to the next action. And again, that's for another day, but, but those are, those are all good ideas. All right. So let's hide that one. Um, Tracy, we'll get to this one when we get to kick ups. That's a different little bit of a read there for you. No, the five would not come over in that situation because he didn't penetrate like the threshold of, without getting down a big rabbit hole of the drop, drag, rack zone reads. Um, they need to get a little bit further down the lane line for five to come over. So maybe my animation was a little too quick, but it was just trying to get you guys. He was reading it and coming over. And the two would not come up out of that corner unless uh, one picks the ball up between the three-point line and the elbow area. If he breaks that, two is going to stay patient until they pick up the ball again. Is that correct? How you would teach that coach? A little bit close. I mean, we're, we're close on that. You know, I think a lot of it is just is the key is the patience in the corners. And if the two, right. if it does turn into a straight one, to two pass and Tracy, that's a great question. That's where the five, maybe they start to take a step that direction. And then they, they, they see that one has not broke the elbow. They've not broken into the drag. Uh, and now they're just going to bounce back, bounce out, or just stay away because you're going to try to get the two now coming downhill um, if that happens. If the one gets contained, stopped, and you end up in a kick-up. Okay, so the next main penetration that the kids need to learn is, and the coaches, is middle penetration. And this can happen from the top or from the 45s. So once they've learned this middle penetration – the, the actions are slightly and the angles are a little bit different, but it's the same concept once the ball's penetrated middle. So let me put the lines on here. So if one goes, goes right to left, five is going to start coming behind them as they break around, as they start getting towards between the three-point line and the nail. And then as they start, Four is going to relocate, so they're crossing that midline. And then they're coming back. And now they're in that deep drag rack zone area. And now you got the five there and the two there. So if I flip the side of the court here for you, and one drives left to right, five has to go behind him. In case his man helped, there'd be a an, an option there called a kickback that we'll show later. Two's raising up. And then five's coming back. So you got someone in the 45 window area, someone behind. So the lane in the middle are the are are the two main penetrations. I'm gonna turn it back to Kurt. He has it in a little bit of a fast draw diagram where he might go over a little bit more. And then we'll get into the baseline penetration here in a second. Okay. Go All ahead right. and go back to the. Gotcha. Area. All right. There you go. So again, we went over there, the, the lane in the middle uh, and then the, the, the attack mindset. And then again, once that initial attack happens, the key is, and then Mark started to show you some of that, what happens based on, the drive. And again, that's the, the beauty of it, I believe, is that organized penetration. Now, here's some general rules that that might help you as you're starting to think about, well, how do I teach this? This is all great. I can see this stuff, but but what are some some hard and fast rules? And again, I, I shouldn't even say hard and fast because as you get better at dribble drive, you become more flexible, more pliable. Uh, early on, you might be more rigid as you're teaching. Uh, a first general rule is I replace the person I pass to. There's a little bit of exceptions, but again, that's a general rule. Sometimes as you get better, you might want to clear a side of the floor for somebody. But the general rule is if I pass a one to two, I become the two if I'm the one. If I, if 
I throw a pass from one to five, I become the five. Um, and again, there's other things that come in, switching, sagging, other things. But for right now, we'll keep it pretty basic. And this is the one I followed almost still now 95% of the time. Uh, post stays opposite. And what you'll notice is your five and your four are in an alignment most of the time. Post stays opposite the ball, relocates when it hits midline. Again, there's exceptions, there's duck-ins, there's skips, those kind of things. But when that ball crosses that imaginary midline, and sometimes if you're on a high school court, it, it's built in for you. I used to love it when we'd go to the middle school gym in our district, and then we would have a line right through the middle of the paint that helped me teach dribble drive and helped me teach some of my defensive concepts. Uh, movement. Uh, I, I, forgot what, I forgot what coach told me this one. If you're a volleyball coach, excuse me, but volleyball lines are basketball guidelines. Volleyball court lines are basketball guidelines. An old wise coach told me one day. So we use the volleyball lines to teach defense and offense. No think, offense to volleyball coaches. I think Vance said that one time about 30 years ago, and I started saying it. He, he said something like, you just got to thank the volleyball team because those lines help us in the press big time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> moment uh okay going back to where we were sorry about that guys movement in the corner starts when that free throw line again that that's something that you got to start to understand is it, there'll be times when that two is really super patient and you use the terminology we use like you know better to be late than early um you know that 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 applies to you guys that are running screen actions you know staggers you, you, if you're if you're open early you're not going to be open and same thing with dribble drive out of the corners. You know, be patient down in there. Uh, the 05 is a is probably the, the hardest spot. And, again, remember they're interchangeable, so all of your players need to understand it. But, but they're really having to learn when to bounce away, when to come behind hard and get downhill and try to get their shoulders square to the rim. Um, and, again, I use that term lightly because I think if you, if you talk to real experts about drives – drive position, you know, your drive position is often with that, that right shoulder drive or left shoulder, but you're still, to me, you're still what I would consider square attacking the rim. Um, this is again in, in Mark's earlier slide too, you know, attacking the double and triple gaps with your dribble pass through a single gap. And again, to another coaching you story, they talked about, we'll never drive another drive. That was one of the things the NBA guy said, well, if you're a dribble drive guy, you always drive a drive. It happens all the time. Now, you, are you going to the same spot? No, but you're st you, you might drive a drive. Um, and again, I, I use the philosophy. Uh, you know, Vance always had attack, attack, skip, attack, attack. That was the name of the offense. And I've kind of wrinkled that over the years, and I'll share that with you in day two or day three. But again, drive those double, triple gaps. Now, this is the slide that that kind of I've always used to to illustrate to my players when we're going to move, when we're going to be, you know, the next action. And I, I have a line to break there. That's kind of across the free throw line. Marks was a little bit higher three point line ish to, to free throw line. And that's perfectly awesome. And there's so many different little tweaks. This is one's been good to me. And then there's that midline. So you're teaching the four to relocate. They ask when, you know, rate as one is crossing from one side to the other. You know, that's when five starts coming behind. You can see in that second picture and then uh, movements start to happen. OK, and so that's kind of where we're letting one, you know, be a player. You know, Calipari used to get them the isolation and say, ah, it's your game. It's your game. And just let them go. Um, for us, it's a little bit more organized than that. But there's aspects of, hey, it is your game. There is freedom in this offense to make plays. So now as we get a little bit further in, there's going to be some terminology here um, that, that Vance used, uh, kick-ups, kick-backs, those kind of things. Uh, I encourage you to create your own language. You know, Greg Campy is a great one. He uses one-syllable ones. I've, I've created the number system that, that talk about each one of these things. But just to, to break down this action now, the one man has been cut off. They've been stopped, X1 has prevented penetration and the one now has to make a decision. You know, is it going to be a, in this case, kick up? This is where the two recognizes the defense might be a little flat and they lift up. And I've got a, a pretty important point there. You could see a negative pass. That's a downhill pass. You want to discourage that as you're teaching it. It doesn't mean it will be perfect. It doesn't mean you'll never have a negative pass 
sometimes the X2, I know in high school, was just not a good defender. We would just, you know, it would be a negative kick down. We called it a kick down, actually, when they just had a bad defender in the corner or a team that overhelped so bad. So negatives, you want to avoid those. It's too easy to switch and too easy to guard. We want to make a positive pass, which is above that line, that, that horizontal line there on your screen. We would call that a positive kick up. And the kick up refers to a pass generally from the elbow to a wing. Uh, the kick back. And again, Mark showed you a little bit of that in the, in the Lucio dry that had the timing of it. And again, I'm trying to illustrate that in a couple of things on this slide that you can see. There's that line down the middle of the key. That's when four knows to relocate as two hits that and starts to, to head toward the three man side. That free throw line was broke. So the three man now, again, this is kind of continuing it a little bit. The three man had lifted on that penetration and they're in that window. And again, you might start to see where the ball's above the free throw line. The three man starts to bump back to that corner. Um, but again, you see a kickback here. The negative kickback is one that goes on the left side of that line on the screen that you're looking there. And a positive, harder to switch, much harder to guard. You teach your players kind of to slide over and get their shoulders square. And then when they go, they go hard. Kind of a nuance to that. You don't want it to be a perfect banana cut. You want to have a little bit of a slide into it to get that downhill attack going. We talk about north-south, you know, being a fullback out of the backfield. We use a lot of football terms. And that's that's one that you want to really make sure that you're emphasizing, again, in your, in your teaching. Uh, the baseline drive. Let's say a kick ahead happens. There's some advantage. X2 is, is too high or a little bit slow in transition or, or just within the flow of the offense, it makes sense to go baseline. Generally, we attack the middle and dribble drive. The baseline drive happens. And later on, you'll learn ways to set up a baseline drive. And, and, and we use the term two-way drives. And that's something that you explore as you get better at the basics. But on this baseline drive, we have two catching it attacking baseline one recognizes the baseline drive and, and runs what I use a drag term there on that one. That would be a drag one coming behind the four tees up gets to the front of the charge circle, looking for a pass because typically X four will come to help three is in that drift spot. Um, the 45 is something I've played around with the last couple of years, watching a lot of NBA and oftentimes, if, if you get X5 to turn their head, we might dive that player. And again, talking to the NBA guys in Vegas, they, they dictated a lot of personnel. Some guys were going to stay there and shoot. If you had a Steve Kerr type shooter, don't dive. You just stay there in space. Uh, if you had a slasher type player um, in that position, and you can think of some NBA guys that are kind of slashers, but not great shooters, maybe a Draymond Green. He might dive in that situation from the 45. But that's your general breakdown of what the baseline drive looks like. Okay. And Mark, are we ready for you now? Yeah, I'll, I'll show you a little animated of it so you guys okay. can see kick up. Kick up. I, I top, uh, you showed a kickback from the wing, and I, yep. and I have it from the initial stages. So let's. Gotcha. So here's the basic kick up. So there it is right there, stopping at the elbow. Now two is going to start. So if you really look at it, he's, he's starting to see that the player's picking it up. And then that positive, throw it above you, and then immediately fill. So now you got the double gap with the five. So as Kurt was talking about, so now – if he drives, you're, you're kind of coming like that. And this player's reading, this player's cutting, and this player's reading actions based upon defense. They have two, two ways that they can go. Most people are going to, if they stop there, our players are going to come up here, what, 90% of the time, unfortunately. So there's a kick up for you guys and a kickback. So this was a kickback based upon a middle penetration from the top slots. From So if they just went middle. Five's going to come across, and I can't really get it to diagram it great. We want to kind of come across, like Kurt was saying, 
and now start heading. Now as as they're coming across, they want to start heading towards the basket and coming down. And right here is a good one because you're back on the stream yard so you could see this question. Uh, this is from Manny. How would you teach the kickback? Would the player reverse pivot or pitch it or both? I'll let you go, Kurt. Okay. A lot of that is um, based, I think, to me, is how they're guarding that. If, if, if the defender on the uh, opposite slot is sagging way back, it might be a butt screen where you dribble and pitch it right behind you. Um, if there's some defense giving a little bit of pressure, typically for us, it's a, it's a pitch with the, with the backhand closest to half court. We call that a little pitch. Um, it, it, you, you'll, you'll occasionally get a team that's really sagging the nail and you can drive right at them and turn around and pitch it. And we teach that we have some of that in our shooting drills where we'll teach, you know, kind of a, a, a an old school, like I used to play back in the eighties where we would just drive it guys and freeze them. We called it a freeze dribble where we would drive right at a defender and kind of turn it into a screen and then pitch it back. So that does happen. I would say the, the, the backside pitch is going to be most of the time against any kind of defensive pressure where you've got to uh, be, be ball conscious. Um, I'm a big believer in ball protection, even though I play a, a kind of a wide open style. I think the team that wins the turnover battle wins a lot of games. So I would say there's there's most of the time 75 kind of that pitch and maybe 25 where you you get some kind of a reverse pivot um, where you pitch it back. Uh, same. I, I, I agree with you on that. Um, just to reiterate, if you're on the Facebook, DDM Hoop Talk Facebook group, this is what it looks like when you don't allow StreamYard to bring your name up. If you don't want to, that's fine. But this is a very good point off of the kick up here that they're talking about. Make sure the corner man doesn't just follow the three-point line. So I think Kurt uses it. We're, he's on a college court. I'm on a high school court. This is an NBA court, but this is where your players, this is where they should be lined up, that, that far off um, NBA spacing. And you don't want to have them while it's in there. really hug that three-point line. They almost want to do this instead. So – they almost want to, if I show this here this way, they want to come up and then come down. Isn't that how you would kind of more yep. of that aspect instead of just playing hugger along this three-point line? Yeah. We and use garbage so cans early on in teaching to get them, get them downhill. And there'll always be some game slippage, but yes. Do you want me to show the baseline penetration and then turn it back to you, right? Sure. Okay. Sounds great. So a lot of times Kurt was talking about this is either call, but a lot of times if you can picture the one in the backcourt and you're running transition and the two's up because the way I kind of teach it without going down a rabbit hole is if we get across midcourt, the two should be in the corner. So this, I'm going to, I'm going to say this is more in transition for us and we're doing a kick ahead to up, up the street pass. And now this is where I'm a little bit different sometimes than Kurt with it. Kurt showed on his, and so I showed it this way. Kurt had his player go to the 45. I think your guy can go anywhere in this area based upon what, based upon where his defender is. I don't think there's a set area, but I do say the drift, most people refer to that as a drift. The terminology that most people use is a tee up there. And then again, you gotta you gotta fill behind. So so it's the same penetration rule aspects. The only the exception is the four man goes to the dotted line, or your logo, or the conference logo, whatever you want to call that area. I call it the dotted line, a tee up. That's how you would look. So his options would be based upon defense. They'd be able to go drift a lot, tee up find the open slot window area or the safety bailout for you read and react type coaches that are used to that being a safety valve. That comes from that aspect of it. That's your baseline penetration. So, we, so those are the three penetrations, lane, middle, baseline. 
if they know those, the kickups and the kickbacks and the actions that flow organically in this offense become easy. It, it, it takes some time, but that's my, but those are the things that they really need to understand. Those are the core principles, in my opinion, lane, middle and baseline penetration. Once they get those kind of down, they'll be able to, in a few days, run this offense fairly effectively. Let's go back to Kurt here on the, on the PowerPoint. Okay. Yeah, and there's there. And I, I think the, the thing that the like about that 45 for me is on that baseline drift, you have that one more pass. I've always believed that, that even our good teams that we play to win conference championships and those things can rotate the first one, but they have a tough time with the second rotation. But I think Mark's exactly right. There's got to be a little flexibility on exactly where that guy goes. It all depends on, on two and where they get it. Um, but we do like that 45. That's how we'll teach it at the beginning. Um, here's, here's a little bit of that window terminology, combining it with a relocation. You say the four relocating. I'm putting a few things into one. We have a window. The two is below the free throw line. So there's the window three that passed the three. There's the positive kickback. So that's just the combo of all those movements that we've talked about so far. And again, I love using that term window. The position is the 45, but we want to get the, the receiver of the pass to be able to feel a window, an, an area they might have to come a step higher, yeah. step lower, just in a window that makes it an easy pass. You know, and, I've and always, my players have been always yelling window, window, window as two's driving and, yeah. and, and whatever you're doing, if you're teaching, real quick, teaching point is if three's coming up, he should be yelling window, window if he's open. And five, whatever your terminology is, drag, six, euro, whatever you put in there, kickback, whatever you want to call that, five should be saying it. And those are teaching points and practices when you're doing this stuff. If they're not saying it, demand it. Because unfortunately, until two gets better, two's head's like this when they pick the ball up, unfortunately. Kurt's been around it a lot of times. First dribbles, heads down. Second dribble, they're starting to pick it up. Now their head's coming until they learn to play with their heads up. They're, they're not going to see their teammates. So their yeah. teammates need to help them out and communicate. Yeah, so we, we talk a show. lot about yeah. – Go ahead. Uh, we, so we talk a lot about reading the defender, um, you know, seeing those guys as you're attacking to make the right decision, to make the next correct decision. So, so here is going off of what Kurt was, Kurt was starting to put the pieces together. And so we have a kick up and now a middle drive. So five and four are going to start. So that's around that elbow area, that break line, break point that Kurt was talking about. So three would read this. Three does not always come up three can cut back door because four relocated and that opens up a back door opportunity based upon how X three guards. We'll get into more of that in day two. So now we did another kick up or throw it to the window like Kurt was showing. And now drive again. So now five and four are going to come again. And one didn't get it on here. One, one should start coming up. And this is this is everybody touching it. So five drives, X4 stepped up, the dump off, three and one are in their perfect spacing. And that's a that's a whole whole possession there of kick up, kick up, kick back, rehearsed for you guys playing off jump stops, playing off two feet, all that good stuff. I'm going to take off the lines here so you guys can just see it, see it where there is moving. We're going to show it one way this way, and then we'll show it the other way here. I'm going to see if I can find anything wrong with my diagram. Uh, fair, fairly accurate. Okay, so now if we started the offense the other direction, it's the same thing. We 
got any. I always, okay. Here's a good one. I always emphasize jump stops and pivots every chance I get. Awesome fundamentals right there. I mean, that's that's a that's a myth buster right there. We roll the ball out and we just let them play. You got to teach the details, right, Kurt? Yep, for sure. Okay, um, let's go back to you. So you go there, and I think I think it might be game film. Yep, I've got some. I've got just two possessions. Yeah, I think they're they're really good ones. Here's some continuation of that. Uh, and again, if you go to the web the the YouTube site, there's probably. 15 different dribble drive clips, but these are some basic ones. And Mark, you can help me if, if the, the film is choppy or what, should I go full screen on it or whatever you think? Um, okay. I'll just go ahead. I'll just go full screen. Is it full screen for you? Yeah, now it is. Okay. And we're, we're thumbs up. So we're ready to go. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So here you can see, let's just talk the talk it and walk it. We've, we've thrown you through the diagrams. This is a late game possession, so you're going to see a little bit more patience than normal, but I think it's a great one to see the movements. Now, I would I would argue right now my two-man needs to be a little bit deeper in the corner. That allows the X2 to be a little higher than we like to plug that gap up. But we've probably called a, a little starter to the offense, a little entry here uh, to get this thing flowing because, again, we're up, in this case, 15 with three to go. We'd love to use 23 seconds and get a great shot. Although we all know that under 10, first 10 seconds is the best time to score. So here we're going to start with a kickback. And again, there's, there's a pitch. There's an old school, butt to the basket pitch without the defensive pressure. Not a problem. You can see the number four up top. She's getting square, but she really didn't come behind it as well as she needed to. But again, 25 seconds on the shot clock in that situation. We're not too worried about it. Okay, we would encourage her in a normal situation to get a little bit more, but she is going downhill with a pretty good rate of speed. The team in white here is not switching, so they're already in a little bit of a tough spot. Notice deep corner there. Notice the post opposite. Two men in the corner. That defender is in what I would say is kind of a kind of a denial, not an old school butt to the ball denial, but she's in a on the line situation. And now we're coming over here for what we would call kick up and that wasn't a two foot stop but there was certainly some a two foot chest pass a pass that was made relatively quickly and safely to the outside hand and you saw the three man start to creep up start to think about it and you can still see the, the new five that used to be the one number 11 here is wide i would have probably maybe get her a little bit higher but again she's opposite um in a good spot not a great spot, but a good spot. And now we have our best player going kind of what I would say uphill. So this is something that I wouldn't teach. But again, time and score, you're still seeing the actions flow. Now here's a flip. Team that's not switching. So we get a flip here. Again, trying to kill a little time. Now they're really in trouble. 21 is now in a bad spot. You can see they're playing flat in the corner. So if you're your two-man there, you're probably going to think about lift. And the three is trying to decide what to do. The four is still opposite the ball. And now here, we, we lose the ball a little bit. Two-man decided to lift. And now as she lifts, notice the four starts to flash. We have a, a rule that you'll learn in, in more advanced is where we might get a little backdoor situation, give and go. But you can see here now the one kind of gathers themselves up. The two man decides, okay, what do I need to do here? You can see the three should probably get a little bit more to the window, maybe half a step up and behind the three point line. The five's okay. The two behind the ball kind of decides, what am I going to do? So she thinks about cutting back door. The one gathers, organizes, and now we're right where we want to be. Huge advantage, paint touch. And now, again, up top here, probably need to do what we would call sprint to space. Number four there needs to sprint to space and get away. Although we're deep enough in the possession here, we've created a huge advantage. Now we've got a really good paint touch. We can go score, but I think we could get something better. Now here's the read there. Now that's a bounce pass. Um, we have a rule in the paint, bouncer lob. Great decision using the bounce pass based on the scouting report. The defender there, long armed, very upright defender. Um, a great outside bounce pass, being safe, being up 15 late in the game, 
And now we get into paint with a huge advantage. You can see the post relocated. I think we not only had the two foot floater here, but we could have had a dump pass to the four for a wide open lay in also. You can see both players lifted up a little bit of a contest. I love that it's off two feet and you can see your four is wide open and that has to do with that relocation piece. And then this is where late game, we're not crashing as hard. We're probably only sending two and a half at this point. Um, normally here we would be sending four to the glass and going, but it's a great possession and I'll roll it through a little bit faster here now that I've talked you through it. But you can see here in full motion, starts out flowing down, kick back, kick up, kind of a flip. Now we're downhill. Now we're getting active. Now we've got a kid who's going to get aggressive, get to the paint, shot clock. We're going to lift again. We get a little bounce to a two-foot finish. Really a great possession there to take a peek at. And I'll try to get escape out of that and show you the second one. Second one, pretty similar. Out of bounds with our five. We designate a player to take it out of bounds every time. Okay. We're sprinting the, to the corners. Again, the three-man kind of stopped early. We sent an early pass with no advantage to our five in transition. This is a great little advanced concept to kind of try to clear a double gap. And now we're going to go right behind her with the drive. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about my two-man. She was a freshman last year, had a tendency to, if you watch the two, she just lifts too early. And again, I, I wanted you to see this because, again, here's what happens when the two man is not patient. Their man gets in the way of a driver. This team was particularly good. We played the region championship. They got us the second time. Um, so she lifts. Now we've got the, another drive. We eventually get what we want, which is a downhill drive. And notice that was kind of a flip and took a bump. And, again, I'll play it from the beginning, kind of let it flow. It's not a perfect possession. It's one that we, we needed to create an advantage early, so we moved it. Here's an attempt at a drive. Good defender. Little shot fake to a flip. We get a little butt screen, and we're able to get through off one and finish. Um, again, just, just two possessions that, that I think are ones that, that you can take a peek at. They're both on my website with the what YouTube site um, and ones that you can take a peek at uh, if you need to. And there's lots of six, seven minute clips of dribble drive action. You'll see, you'll see some advanced concepts in there. You'll see some stuff that like, hmm, that looks interesting because we do post up our guards a lot. We do run different actions to lift the post out of the paint, but that's kind of for a different time. So I'll let Mark jump in. Uh, and Mark, I think you're on here. Let's go. Boom. There you go. And let's remove. All right, so now it should be just both of us on the screen. Um, let's see. Let's add this. What do we got? Do you want to move that ahead one more one more slide? Oh, sure. Is that is that? Or no, we're not done yet, are we? No, I, I got think... a little chatting to do here. Is it? Yeah. Oh, Kurt's keys. Kurt's keys. Here we go. Yeah. Kurt's yeah. keys. Yes, I, I, yeah, you know, Mark knows I'm kind of goofy sometimes, <laughs> but I, I do it. fun stuff. I, I, I loved having students back in my classroom today. I haven't had kids in my classroom in a year and a half. Uh, we, we were hybrid, so I don't count that. So anyway, it was fun. Um, some key things. Want me to go through these, Mark? You want to do Q&A? What do you want to do? I'll just, let's just run through these real fast. Yeah. Sounds just good. Hammer them out. Patience in the corners. Patience, patience, patience. Um, and, and what you want to do, I think, is an important thing is ask your players why they lifted. So if you get a player and don't be a jerk about it, you know, I think when I first taught it, I'm like, oh, I'm yelling at him. It's like, you, I like to ask them why I try to teach why I try to get a little bit deeper into some of the, the things behind it. I think it'll help teach better vocabulary and your understanding is what makes you a good teacher. You know, you're creating a good vocabulary, um, but patience in the corners is super important. Paint touches, you know, that's your goal with every drive. Even kids that can just get a piece of it will start to, Break down the defense. We'll start to put your defense into disadvantage situations. Uh, the positive passes, there won't always 100% be positive passes, um, but I think that's that's got to be something early that you at least understand that concept and can start to diagnose, hey, why, why were they able to switch so easily? And a lot of times it comes back to that positive and negatives. Uh, when you're teaching the drive, 
and, and the sooner you can get your your players to to understand that, that they got to take a bump sometimes some of our best drivers this is one of those myth busters are some of our bigger players that we can <clears throat> get and they take a bump they're able to get the paint because they simply are able to take that bump and get into paint I play north south not east west east west to me is old school dribble weave and in high school my first five or six years at Oregon city, we played a lot of really good dribble weave because we had really amazing players um, that could run it and get away with some of the switching and stuff. Cause ultimately we, we, we got you out of position and we got gaps cause, and that was out of three out two in, um, but North, South, not East, West attack mindset, go and catch. If you can't shoot it, drive it. If you can't shoot it or drive it, pass it. If you can't do the last two, do the drive part, but you, you got to have that attack mindset. It can't be, Pass, catch, hold the ball, triple threat. I think I heard somebody say it in a clinic a, a couple of years ago, but triple threat has kind of become last resort in the modern offense. Um, utilizing great shot selection. I think if you can't teach shot selection, if you don't understand what a good shot is and you can't hold players accountable, and I will tell you the best way to do it is is putting points on certain shots and, and no points on other shots. Mid-range versus threes attacking the rim and so forth. So there's my, I think it was seven. I don't think I added an eight. <laughs> Kurt Skies, <laughs> there's seven of them. And we can go ahead and get to here and then do q and Is that what you want to do, Mark? Yeah, well, I'll look through the comments here. Okay. Um, just something, Kurt and I, we went live yesterday kind of to test the stuff. We mentioned to it, a uh, majority of the audience is well, is tuning in on the YouTube channel right now. But we do. We started this. Uh, we've had it a little over a year, I think, now when, since we did it together, and it's grown from 100, 200 coaches to to almost 2,500 now. And it is a private Facebook group, so I can't say really who's in it for privacy rules. But let's just say there's multiple state champions in that in that in that group. Lots of coaches with lots of knowledge that are answering questions daily and helping coaches. So um, we mention it all the time. You just go to Facebook and you just search dribble drive motion, hoop talk. And, and it, or if you hit put dribble drive motion in, in a Facebook group or in a search, you, it should pop up pretty quickly. Uh, anything you want to say about that group before we take some questions? Coach? No, there, there's some, there's some good stuff in there and I'll, and I don't, hadn't posted a lot lately. We're trying to get, get ready for school and everything, but, but, there's, there's posts in there all the time. Um, I'll try to throw something in there at least once a week, whether it's an X's and O's or an idea or a concept or a film clip. I've been putting a couple film clips because I, I've gone through our, our team and studied every possession from last season, uh, at least most of them anyway, um, and try to determine what shots we're shooting so I can give the players feedback and what shots we need to work on in practice. So there's some good stuff in there. All right, so let's let me let me look at the questions here. I think you could see them too if you if we click on comments. Uh, well, here's one. I'll, I get this all the time with through my social media. Looks like a coach from Japan or China, yeah. overseas. I don't want to offend anybody. I'll just say overseas. Mm -hmm. Sorry if I offended by saying the wrong one there. Uh, oh, says in Japan. So yeah, yeah. Bad. Thank you, Coach. What uh, I use the Luceo Sports app. Um, Kurt was using fast draw. We both use, I use, I use both of them. Both of them have uh, their pluses and cons. So, but I think I like mine because it, because of me doing virtual stuff with coaches and to animate and show you guys things virtually, I think it really helps and brings home some visual for you. But that's uh, coach. If you want to reach out to me an email, I can get you in contact with somebody from Luceo. Okay. Um, Let's see. What do we got? I don't know if we have any. If you guys got any questions, let's see. You want to event? Let's just take that off. Let's remove that. Let's just go there. So we got people that have been here tonight. We got Victor Valencia from the Bay Area running DDM with sixth graders coach. So got to got got to love it. Maybe he's near Doc. <laughs> Could be near one of them. It's either near Doc or SoPac, one side of the Bay or the other. Um, Michelle joined us tonight from, from Houston, totally new. 
Uh, Michelle, thanks for joining us. Hope you learned a little bit about Dribble Drive tonight. Brandon Gibson from Indiana, new to the offense. If I had to bet, that's like Bobby Bobby Nightland right there. That's pure motion usually, right, Coach? Indiana. So uh, uh, we had Australia. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Just interesting to see where you guys uh, – Pat Paul McGrath from Ireland, Coach, new to the offense. So uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Hopefully, hopefully you picked up a few things. It's just cool to see this is what COVID did this. We wouldn't have been able, uh, honestly, me and Kurt talk about it all the time. We wouldn't have met. Me and Kurt wouldn't have met if COVID wouldn't happen, I don't think. So yep. uh, it's just awesome to see. Is there any questions that you guys have? We've got a few minutes here. Um, changing, changing direction during a draw. Oh, here's a good question. So, Mark, just to clarify, what what are, you, are we talking about? Uh, I'm attacking. The angle's bad. I I pull back, dribble. I bounce it out and reattack. Is that what we're we're talking about here? I don't know, Patrick. Can you can you maybe um, put it in the in the comments and let us know a little bit about about it? Oh, uh, somebody from the Philippines is in here. I'm going to do a clinic for them in October. I'm doing I'm doing something for Malaysia in December. <laughs> uh, okay, attacking uh, uh, attacking the crossover, attacking cut off, then crosses over from the one. So yeah. So yeah, he was attacking from probably a lane penetration or a middle penetration, and then. Yeah, that, that can happen. I mean, you know, if you're talking about just a simple crossover, like you're a, you're you're getting into what we yeah, call the no, attack that, from lane penetration, coach. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. That that's just a simple matter of the four's got to be ready now. Instead of being ready to to seal and catch a dump pass, they now have to be ready to relocate. My guess is now you're coming to the three man side, right? Uh, on that crossover, five might have to get ready to to have, as they've moved but away at first or at least started to come behind maybe a little it, it would all have to depend um exactly you know what five did did they break over early on the one or did they stay away and once they crossed over now now it turns into that kickback four relocates three has to be patient in the corner it could turn into a back door there but yeah that's that's not a problem at all coach as far as you know, we, we, we certainly want them to try to beat their man off the dribble. And, and the better that player is, the more freedom we're going to give to them on, on just letting them play to get to paint. This is a – oh, thank you, Alvin, um, from the Philippines. Uh, where was the one – here we go. This is a good question. What is the youngest age this offense can be taught to? Um, my belief might be a little bit different than Kurt's. I'll, I'll go first here and swing on it and say, I probably would not teach this below sixth grade. Um, I would probably in fifth grade, fourth grade. I'm not a big five on five fan below fifth grade, to be honest. I think it should just be skills and fundamentals and maybe even playing three on three half court because growing up and watching little kids play soccer, when they're like eight, seven, what do they do? They go swarm to the ball. Um, when it's little kids playing basketball, like eight U, it can be played, but on an 84 foot court, it just seems to me crazy. So I would say sixth grade and like fifth grade, fourth grade, I would probably maybe do more of a five out pass and cut. What do you think, coach? Well, just from my experience, we had a, in my youth program at Oregon City, we had our fifth grade coaches 100% all in dribble drive. It was a, it was great to watch when I'd I'd go watch a fifth grade game and you're hearing drop five and drop one. I think they probably <laughs> they probably took it to an extreme and and it was very successful. I mean you you want to talk about backdoor and a kid in the fifth grade, but again Oregon and women's basketball there's some competitive teams up here. So I think you can do it. I think it really depends on on what you want to do a personal choice. Um 
you, know, you may have Mark's philosophy that you don't want to do it below sixth grade. That's great. I, I think you can do it at fifth. I think you also have to be careful of, of when you get them too young, of, of, of the game not being fun, of, of too many rules. Uh, and that's uh, the coach just, just piped in with some practice time issues. I think that's a great point. That's, that's a great point right there. And, yep. You know, um, we, we, you got to teach them to love the game right now on the, on the girls side, participation numbers are down nationwide uh, in participation for girls basketball. I think the elite players are still elite as good as they've ever been, but your numbers are down uh, nationwide and it's got to be fun. I mean, we, we all picked up a basketball and shot it in our backyard because it was fun. We didn't, we didn't do it because somebody had a clipboard and a whistle and told us three, two, one, shoot it. Um, so I think we all have to keep that in mind whenever we're doing coaching wise. Uh, Paul, I think this offense can be ran against anything. There's been questions already in the chat comments. Can it be ran against zone? Can it be ran against this? Can it be ran against that? It's concept based. So your concepts will just change uh, tomorrow night and day two toward the end of the presentation, we'll talk to you a little bit more about how you can maybe learn how to run it against the various defenses. So um, we'll have we'll have something for you guys talking to you about that tomorrow night if you join us tomorrow night on tomorrow night's live. So, um, so um, there was a whole, there was a whole question in there, Mark, um, at 6.15 oh, on one? the – Strand at 6.15 p.m., Manny D. Uh, okay. That one. There we go. I um, think that's a reference thing to me. I mean, I'll show it to him in the hole, and then we'll break it down. Um, I don't know. I, I think that can go both ways. Some guys start completely in parts. Um, again, tomorrow night, we're going to have something to talk to you guys about that takes <laughs> us to a whole nother level. We don't want to give away too much tonight, but it, it takes what we did in three nights. We did over in six weeks. Some of you that are on this call are, are already members of that, but there's going to be an offer tomorrow night. I'm not going to shy away from it from you guys. We'll talk about it at the beginning, but we're going to talk to you about um, something that me and Kurt, Kurt put together about this time last year on um, that. We call it our, it's, we, we worked pretty dang hard on that thing and, and we're, we're pretty pro we're pretty proud of the product that we put together. So um, we'll, we'll present that to you guys tomorrow night in an offer for you guys, if you're interested. Um, by all means, you don't have to oblige the offer or anything. Um, we're doing the three nights for you to listen and maybe pick up a few nuggets. If you want to take a deeper nut dive, it will be for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, we might get into a uh, few drills or some ideas to show you some, some things. We could possibly do that for you, uh, Paul. Um, awesome. Paul's the one from Ireland, so I love there it. You go. Let's get dribble drive in Ireland going. So, Conor McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make, uh, I'll put my sunglasses on, and my wife goes, you look like Conor McGregor when I've had these certain sunglasses on. I'm like, no, don't, don't, don't. Um, but um, I think – We've been going about an hour and 20 minutes here. We appreciate you guys. Uh, access for replays. Um, I mean, touch on that. If you registered, um, it's going to be on the YouTube channel for a little bit. It will eventually drop off the YouTube channel. If you are a member of Dribble Drive Motion A to Z already, this will be added into the course for you. So if you already have got our program i'm going to throw it into the course for you when we're done as a bonus for what you've already done so you can review it because technology's changed a little bit i didn't have luceo animation it was all fast draw so it will help you maybe understand some points so ddm in ireland's gonna happen all right well, we're on a plane if you we're on a plane <laughs> uh, it might cost you we're on a plane come teach it i'm just kidding uh, i need a vacation <laughs> so what if we are part of, of system basketball steven it will probably it's going to be part of the membership club steven will be it will you'll be taken care of as well okay so more on that stuff for you guys you know i'll take care of the membership guys as well so um hopefully you guys will if 
If you haven't registered, please register so I can send you more information for tomorrow night and Wednesday night. Um, it will be on the System Basketball YouTube channel. Again, check out the Hoop Talk group. Um, and we'll see you guys tomorrow night at 5 p.m. We're going to discuss playing off the first penetration. So we're going to a little bit dive deeper into the reads and the understanding of linking everything together and helping you understand teaching your players and for you to be able to go teach it to your players as well. Anything you want to leave them with coach? No, exciting. We don't want to, we want to save a little bit for tomorrow. Cause I think, uh, oh. I think there's a lot of, a lot of layers to it. If to use a read and react term, there's a lot of levels to it. There's a lot of nuances to those things that I think it'll help you when you're teaching it. And if you, and if you guys enjoyed tonight, hey, give us a shout out on social media. Um, invite invite your staff, invite fellow coaches to, to join us if you think anyone else might be interested in this. So um, this is going to be over. It's going to be up on YouTube. It's inside the Dribble Drive Motion Hoop Talk group. So um, you guys will be able to review it until it gets removed probably by the end of the weekend. So um, we'll see you guys tomorrow at 5 p.m. If you have any questions, reach out to Kurt or me. Okay, thanks again for joining us tonight.